today. Now, despite being fit and healthy, our next guest, Faith Harrison, had a heart attack earlier this year, just 22 years old. After reporting chest pains and tingling in her left arm, Faith was initially told she was suffering from anxiety and maybe a stomach bug. Uh, now she wants to raise more awareness for heart attacks with young people and joins us alongside heart surgeon Dr Steve Westerby. Morning to both of you. Morning yeah. to both. Good morning. Yeah. Thanks for coming in. Good morning. So, Faith, super fit, um, playing hockey loads. Uh, all began when you started to feel unwell after a hockey game. Yes. And what can you remember after that? So... I couldn't pinpoint why I was feeling ill, but it was 30 minutes into my drive when my left arm started to get tingly, started to get numb, it felt like someone was sitting on my front and my back. Got home, told my parents something is wrong, got progressively worse, I started violently vomiting, very dizzy, in and out of consciousness, and that's when we decided we needed to go and get some help. Yeah. Went to A&E, I was unfortunately told maybe it's a stomach bug, but after an ECG I was told, you're having a major heart attack, you need to go to Stoke and have emergency surgery. So it was your dad who said, listen, we need to go to hospital, we, yeah. we, let's stop messing around. And initially they said it's probably a little bit of anxiety, a yeah. stomach bug. Yeah. What was your thoughts when you actually heard you're having a heart attack, you are now going to go down to surgery? Well, I was actually, I heard from someone else. I had to hear over the blue curtain. Um, I was on a lot of medication at the time, so I couldn't really compute actually what was going on. You must have been so on. spun out what yeah, was going on. Yeah, my head was completely gone. I, I thought they were lying, if I'm completely honest. I mean, you're 22 and it's like the last thing on yeah. your mind that you're having a totally. heart attack. It's unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, is this, is this quite... Um, this is very rare for a 22-year-old to have a heart attack, isn't it? It is. It's, it's very rare for a, a heart attack to occur in the way it did, but uh, let's put it this way, they do, and people need to be aware of it. Um, I operated on many babies who have had heart attacks because their coronary arteries had come off the wrong blood vessel. The coronary arteries that came off the blood vessel to the lungs instead of the main artery to the body, and, and it's the same story. Nobody believes the poor mother when she says, my kid is in distress, is breathless, and everything else. Uh, so there needs to be an awareness that people of all age groups can suffer heart attacks for various reasons. Now, so, and you need to listen to what the patient's actually saying? Yeah. If someone says, I've got some tingling down my left arm, yeah. that's a clue, isn't it? Well, when, when you listen to Faith, uh, she describes the classic presenting symptoms of a heart attack. Uh, she, she had it for an unusual reason. People just believe that heart attack is something that the, the older age group people get because of coronary artery disease. Uh, that is narrowing atheromatous plaques and so on. A plaque plate breaks, occludes the coronary and the muscle dies. But in Faith's case, she had a blood clot in her leg veins, which is a, commonest, a common occurrence, and part of it broke off, went up into the heart and across the so-called patent foramen ovale. Now, that's a hole in the heart that, as I say, all, all babies have mm -hmm. in utero to allow blood to bypass the lungs, because in, in, in the uterus, the lungs are not expanded. Mm -hmm. So the right-sided blood goes across to the left side. In most people, that closes spontaneously after birth, but in a significant proportion, it stays open. And is this what happened to Faith? She had something that she'd had since birth that they discovered when they did the surgery. Is that what happened, Faith? Yeah, so I've always had a hole. It's kind of a flap, so it opens and closes when I do certain activities. So and you never knew about it. it? No, 22 years, I've gone along perfectly fine. And then this has occurred. Steve, can you tell us about, is it patent foramen um, of our PFO? PFO, patent foramen ovale. Um, as I say, very common. But there was a clue here that, that Faith had a problem. She'd had previously a blood clot to her lungs. And did you know about that? I had had two in my leg when I was 17 and 19, right. but they both went undiagnosed at the time. Yeah. Well, I think if, if you're diagnosed with uh, blood clot to the lungs from the leg veins, mm -hmm. everybody should have a cardiac echo. Because if you're found to have one of these 
patent for Raymond O'Bailey's PFOs, you can have it closed. Uh, and in the old days, I used to occasionally have to close them surgically. I remember pulling great clots through the patent frame and uh, back into the right side of the heart that, that were as big as snakes. Wow. Um, the whole leg vein blood clot spins off, goes up into the heart and shoots across the foramen ovale uh, if you've got a blockage in the lungs. Um, so it, it's a very serious condition and uh, Faith needs that hole closed. Yeah. Yeah. It's still not been closed. No, not as of yet. It will be closed. Are you going to have the operation to yes, have it closed? Yes, it will. I don't have a date as of yet. Yeah, but it needs to be closed. Yeah. Uh, how has this, obviously, heart failure, how has this changed your life? Because you were very fit before. You did a lot of exercise. Yeah. What's your life like now? So, I'm able to reform Pilates, which a lot of doctors never expected I'd be able to ever right. get back into that's ever. So that's huge progress for me. I can't run, I can't play hockey, I get out of breath, I do get fatigued. So I do have long lasting effects of heart failure and I will for a long time. But I'm making do of what I've got available and I'm, I'm doing my best. Good for will you. Will that help right? after your operation? Like, will, you get, will, you, will you ever get back to full fitness? I've been told the pressure on the heart should reduce, which means I should be able to do a little more exertion, but I probably will never go back to how fit I was previously. Yeah. But we've got to get her back to that fitness. Yeah. Um, yeah you need an optimist sat next to I bet you'd love right Steve now. to work on you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we all would. Yeah. Closing that patent for Eamon O'Valley will be done with a catheter. It's yeah. a nice technique. It's, it's quick and it closes the hole and makes her safe. But what, what Faith has been left with is a scar in the heart muscle. And scar doesn't contract, it expands. Um, and what we found operating on babies that had had those heart attacks mm -hmm. was that if you corrected the blood supply, the fibrous tissue from a heart attack was absorbed and disappeared. Wow. Now, that, nobody believed that that could happen, and we noticed that in Oxford. And that made me think there should be a way of engineering the same thing in adults, where once you get a, a, a piece of scar, it never goes away. So I, I got to know a Nobel Prize winner called Professor Sir Martin Evans, who engineers cells. He was the first person to isolate stem cells from bone marrow. Uh, and he produced a cell that I tested in heart attack patients in Greece, as it happens, because I couldn't do it here. And what we found was one particular uh, progenitor cell that you can give from one patient to another with, without a rejection response removed scar tissue, up to 40 to 45% of the scar tissue. Mm. So there needs to be optimism along these lines, that it's not a matter of just waiting and doing nothing and letting the heart failure develop down the line. You can be proactive. Mm. You, these days, with people with very badly damaged hearts, we can use machines. And when I'm talking about machines, I've got a habit of producing artificial hearts <laughs> from my pocket. <laughs> uh, I did the last time I was well, with you. Stuff out of them. He's pockets. always oh, getting the little the, tricks these, out. Artificial hearts yeah, this one. These little pumps will take over the whole left side of the circulation in somebody with a very severe heart attack. And I am suggesting that we can now remodel and regenerate sick hearts with cells. We, engineered we, we, cells. We've kind of run out of time, but just very quickly, for anybody who's experienced, what are the signs of heart attack? What are they? I, it, when you're having it a heart attack, to different people? it comes on quite suddenly. The sudden occlusion of a coronary artery. You will feel pain in the centre of the chest and it's crushing pain and it tends to radiate, uh, as we call it, down the left arm. And it's a crushing feeling you will then feel short of breath as the pumping chamber, the main pumping chamber, the left ventricle, starts to fail because it will not contract without any blood flow. Yeah. And lastly, Faith, what would you like to do now? Like, I mean, you, you, just being on this couch is probably raising awareness for, for people around your age. I'd like to raise more awareness of heart attacks. They can happen in young people and for doctors to recognise those symptoms. 
but also for people who are suffering heart attacks and the aftermath heart attacks yeah, to yeah. talk about it yeah. and go to the British Heart Foundation to, to get that support that they need. Thank, Hi, thank Steve. you. Thank you for Steve, joining thank us. thank you. And obviously, if you experience any of those symptoms, 999 straight away, uh, anyone around you.